So let me do this real quick. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Thursday. Um, for those of you on Facebook, I'll be reading your comments. And on Zoom, you're going to actually be able to interact live. So um, you're not going to have to convey your message or raise your hand. Um, you can actually interact live. Um, today, we're going to be looking at John Min's uh, colors. He will be the artist in the studio tomorrow. Um, he's actually on Zoom right now. So it's going to actually be uh, one of those times where the artist is also going to be watching. So we can actually um, ask him some questions about his colors as we, as we um, go through them. Um, also, I did go through, and uh, this is more for it was a question that Ian had. Um, from last time that picked out a good portion of the reds and we can quickly just go through those and when we're done with Jan Min's colors I, we can look at some of the reds as well so anything that had a red as the pigment I picked it out so I'll just show you there's just a lot of different types of reds um, so with that thank you for um, joining today so Majella, thank you. And who do we have on here? Ian's on. Angela is doing the, Angela's watching today, but translating tomorrow. Anna Marie is there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start. Hello, Rick. Good to see you. Hello, Nika. Okay, so today we're looking at the, hello, Besnick and Nora. Today we're looking at the colors of John Min, who will be our artist tomorrow. He's also with us right now. Uh, you can read about him. And he's answered quite a few questions. So uh, if you want to read about those ahead of time, you can go to his website, his Instagram. Today we'll be looking at his, his colors. His website, his Instagram. Hello, Juliet. Hello, Prapple. Raffles, good to see you online. Raffle um, sometime uh, will be in the artist studio. Right now he's traveling the world on a 900 plus foot long ship, uh, but he paints every, he paints almost every day. It's great to see his artwork. So if you need to see uh, Kim is in the studio sometime in several months. So I'm going to start with uh, gray titanium. And this is a color that Gabriel just asked John Min about and, and kind of why, why does he use it. John Min, as I use this color, can you tell people why you use the uh, gray titanium? Please. You have to unmute yourself. You're muted. John, I mean, you have to unmute yourself. You're Can muted. I? Yeah. Um, I'm there. You go. You, you, you can hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it's a lovely color. I, I use it for skies, for, uh, for seas, and it is wonderful for mixing, especially with uh, lavender, with uh, the burnt shenna. Uh, it's, 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 it's a great use. It's, it's, it's an all round uh, color. Oh, you know what? I have this on me and I'm not gonna show you the colors. So let me flip this around. Okay. 
it'll start to focus. Let's see. Okay, so. Trying to get that to focus. It seems like it wants to focus. Anyway, this is going to, I'll get it to focus. This is the gray titanium, and this right here is the um, Aussie red gold. I did something probably shouldn't do. I put a brand new camera on. There we go. The camera just has a mind of its own. Okay. There we go. So this is the gray titanium and this is the Aussie red gold. And this is going to be the Payne's blue gray. Payne's blue gray. This is burnt umber. Then we'll mix some colors if you like. This is burnt umber. Burnt umber. This is CAD red medium U. Hello, George. Hello, Claudia. And this is going to be cobalt teal blue. Cobalt tail blue. The gray rosemary is um, gray titanium. So gray titanium is PW6, titanium is PW6, buff titanium is PW6, color one. So that is gray titanium. Hello, Raffaele and Kathy from Australia. Welcome, everybody. Is there other, so Giovanni's also painting them. He's painting them from the, from pans he's dried. And Gabriel's doing his from the stick. Thank you, Gabriel. And Johnny's doing his as well. Thank you, Johnny. So any colors that you would like to have uh, of these that you'd like to have mixed? The buff titanium. This is the um, Aussie red gold. This is the Payne's blue gray. This is the burnt umber. This right here is the cad red hue. And this is the cobalt teal blue. May I see the cobalt blue teal with the Aussie? Sure. Please, thanks. Okay. Hey, that's what I was gonna say, Anna. 
Oh my God, great minds think alike, huh? <laughs> I think we both like the complimentary and that I beat you to it. <laughs> <laughs> so fast. See. Yeah, do you mix those two together? Sometimes, sir, uh, Gabriel. And a uh, practical use, how would you, what would you use those two together for? Well, may, maybe if I uh, want to, 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 to lower a bit the, uh, the brilliancy of the Aussie red gold, but, but not often. The most I mix uh, titanium gray with lavender and uh, uh, bunchenna to, to, to get warm, warm grays, yeah. Thank is it so possible? Much. Is it possible to mix them side by side with high volume of water so that they mix and keep their vibrancy? I never tried. I never tried. No. So what do you mean by that? Because I'll do it. What do you mean by that? Anna? If you take a juicy puddle of one highly saturated color and a juicy puddle, thank you, Johnny. That's great see Johnny's work and a juicy puddle of the other and then just take a clean wet brush and wash between them so that they merge but then they don't mix too much to lose saturation so Johnny beat me to that and that looks that looks really good and so did Giovanni Ethel can you spot spotlight Johnny for the whole screen and then do Giovanni for the whole screen so that way. And do you mix them on the paper or do you mix them on your palette? Thank you, Johnny. And then Giovanni. Same thing. Very nice. Thank you, both of you. So, Gabriel, is that a new painting you have besides you? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, this is a recent one. Uh, the reference photo um, was provided by the amazing um, Angela Barbie of her beautiful city of Girona. I didn't realize that was so huge. <laughs> very big. Very nice. Very, very nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for encouraging my behavior. Ooh, thank you. And Anna, what do you have behind you? This is the painting I spotlighted uh, oh, two weeks time? back from Jerusalem. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. And I and John um, showing his swatch as well. Oh, very cool. Hello. Well, I've finally got my paint. To, well, stick. And uh, I had a, a bit of a swatch today, William. Uh, trying different uh, techniques out with them. And they're, they're quite nice, these. I shall do further experimentation with them and see what, uh, where we take it. So I've got, I've got 20, 20 sticks in all at the moment. Uh, I may uh, get one or two supplementary tube paints that 
don't exist in the uh, in the um, in the stick form. But apart from that, they're very nice. These. Yeah. Very cool. You like the sticks? Yeah, the the different. Uh, it's it's forcing me to look at um, doing things in a slightly different way than what I would normally. I.e., just using a brush, for example. It's it's unnatural for me to use a stick, so it's making me do it, and it's making me think in different ways about textures. Awesome. Thank you, Ian. Let me put two colors down. You know. So this one is the green gold. John, we have Angela yes. showing yeah. her artwork too. It's beautiful. Oh, awesome. I'm going to spot. Yes, so Angela, thank you. Can you talk about your artwork for a couple of seconds? Yes. Uh, I'm sure I was if I wasn't muted. This it looks very red, but this is actually a ultra a rose of ultramarine, which I like very much, yeah. mixed with a moon glow, and then um, quinacridon gold, quinacridon gold, and these three colors and lunar black. Very nice. Nice granulation. Yeah, granulation a lot. That is the lunar black. Thank you. Do you come up with the landscape out of your memory or is it uh, a source image that you pull no, the composition? It's uh, out of the memory of a place I was in, in, in Santa Cruz. There was this rock and I cannot stop painting that rock in the sea. <laughs> That is supposed the red ultramarine rose of ultramarine is supposed to be the sea, even though the sea is not red. But who cares? <laughs> and do you choose the colors looking at the color wheel, looking at the pigments that you own, or by intuition? A lot of what I do is intuition. I like uh, the mix of, of the conacrylon um, gold and the moon glow. And so Moonglow mixes also very well. It combines very well with the Rose of Ultramarine. And it's like, a, you know, a reflection on the sea and the Lunar Black for the darks. Cool. Thank you. So here what I have is the Thank you. Um, green gold. Thank you. The green gold. This is Hansi Yellow Deep. It's out of focus, John. Yeah, it has its own little mind. I don't know. Uh -huh. John? Yes? Is your camera uh, a Logitech? It, I believe it actually is a Logitech. You can download some software that will help you uh, make it... Um, there we go. So you can click manual uh, focusing and it won't it won't go like that. Oh good. I will download that. It's the other it's one a lot better that. now. It's I'm a sorry? lot better now. Oh good. Yes. So this one is the green gold. And then this one is the Hansa Yellow Deep. This is the lavender. We might want to ask uh, John Min about lavender. Uh, lavender, and this is the Mayan dark blue. Okay. One of the other colors that John Min uses is that, which we'll see in a couple of minutes, is the Veridiger. And uh, I've seen that used a couple of times, but it might be nice to ask him how he uses that in particular. Excuse so, me, what is your yellow there? This right, right here is Hansa Yellow Deep. Oh, OK. All right, so then Johnny's doing them, and then Giovanni, okay. So- May I ask Jan about his lavender? Is that- absolutely can. A color that we need to buy the convenience mixture for, or is it possible 
to create that pigment mixing it? Well, actually, I discovered this color by Alvaro. <laughs> Some 12 years ago, I did follow two masterclasses with him and I was delighted by, by the color. And um, it's great for use uh, many, many things. And um, even if you want to use it pure from the tube, it's very, very practical. But as I said before, it, it's a great color to, to mix and make beautiful warm grays. If you mix it with uh, Bunchena or Quinacridrone Shena, you get beautiful warm grays. It's good for backgrounds and for landscapes. It gives that hazy, misty feeling. So it's a lovely color. If I don't know more what to do in my paintings, I always take some lavender. <laughs> it's funny, but it, but it's it's true. And secondly, I love blue colors. John knows it, so it's great. May I say that um, uh, Nicolas Lopez is also a fan of lavender, and he uses it in his set, and he uses it for light values like when it, they are in the background when yeah. it does you know like a bit atmospheric um, um at, yes atmospheric scenes then it the colors in the background he also uses it to mix like a light color like a white because it has some white doesn't it john oh yes yes it, it has i often use it and mixes uh, for the for for the skies the clouds it it it, it, it lights and yes it, Great to make a combination with paints blue gray because there's already a bit of blue in it. So yeah. it runs very well. Yeah. Even if you use it pure in a dark background, you can make signs and uh, uh, get spot on, on, on that lovely color. Yes, Alvaro cannot do anything without his lavender. Oh, yes. Uh, Jan. Yeah. Uh, as an artist, who, who inspires you? Who, who do you look to as an artist to say, yeah, that's a style I like? Oh, a lot of artists. <laughs> uh, I, I started my career when, when, when I did study medicines. I was half of the time in our uh, uh, Maritime Museum. And I was a big fan of Willem van der Velde. He, he was actually a Rembrandt amongst the sea painters. But later on, some 15 years ago, I did meet um, Alvaro and he, he, he really changed my life because his style was so, so expressive and emotional. So that was actually the time that I decided to, uh, to, 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 to choose watercolor as my medium after many, many, many years of painting oils and drawings. But there are a lot of more uh, great painters. Uh, I, I love Thomas Scheller. I love uh, Praful. Uh, of course, Joseph Sabukvik is a real, real great artist and a lot of more. So every day we are inspired by others and uh, we, we, we can learn a lot by uh, exploring their works, how, how it works and uh, analyze it. So um, yes. I have a lot of uh, good masters in, in, in my mind. So thank you very much, Armin. So um, there was a question on Facebook, it might have already been answered, but I'm going to answer it again from Allison. And Allison says, what are those colors? So Allison grasped quite these colors. This one is the green gold. This one is the Hansa yellow deep. This is the lavender. This is the Mayan dark blue. This is the manganese blue U, and this is the permanent orange. So the lavender, I, I actually brought the lavender out because of Alvaro. It was the one color that we didn't have within our range and Alvaro was asking for it. And so I, so I brought that out in the, in the range, which is, So the one I'm going to do here is going to be the parallel. Well, are you happy you did? 
Are you are you yes, happy you started absolutely. painting lavender? Is yes. it a very popular color? It is a popular color. One is because you know Alvaro uses it and he has such a reach among artists. So yes, absolutely. Uh, super. Raffaele is very uh, uh, I read a comment by Raffaele. He says, John, a special evening on white and on all your colors containing white pigments would be so interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I would absolutely be glad to do that. I brought some reds today because Ian was talking about that last week and I thought I said I would bring them. So I brought the reds this week. I can do the whites next week. Absolutely. <laughs> that will be um, wonderful. Rosemary had a question that's could you comment on transparency? So Rosemary, um, like, like all colors, um, whether something's transparent or opaque or um, semi-transparent, uh, granulate, non-granulate is all about the pigment. It, it comes down to the pigment and why, why the manufacturer um, made it. And the manufacturer is making those pigments for a purpose. They have a client, and usually those clients are um, industry and usually within industry, um, it can be the, the car industry. And if the, um, the customer, the client is asking for something to be transparent or within the automobile industry, Ford, Chevy, whoever, um, if their chemists are making something because the usage is going to be for transparent, then it becomes a, a, it's a transparent pigment. They are chemically making it that way. So there's a lot of uh, power they have as to what um, the characteristics of the pigment, pigment are going to be. So Johnny, what is that? So this is paints blue gray with lavender. Ooh. Amazing mix. That was... A I was explaining, if you are using paints blue gray in a dark sky, uh, I'll show it to tomorrow, then that lavender gives a wonderful uh, light in the paints blue gray. It's, it's amazing what, what it does. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Thank so, you. Every, so everybody watching that was John Min, and John Min is gonna be the artist tomorrow. So he's also talking about his colors today. Okay, this is going to be Alvaro's Caliente. So Alvaro has um, two colors. He has Caliente and he has Fresco. So he has warm, hot, and cool. Again. You can kind of see it. You can kind of see it there. Yes. Uh, I'm ask, uh, just asking Jan. How, how long has it took him to develop his personal palette? You, you, want, you, you want me to answer? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, actually, it's, it's not a trick that you learn in, uh, in a few weeks, even not in a few months. I'm uh, drawing and painting since my childhood. And um, it, it has never left me. So 20 years ago, I, w I did retire uh, quite early and uh, decided to pick up my old love. And uh, well, I, I paint now every day. So uh, actually, I can't live without painting anymore. <laughs> so it's, it's a matter of doing and doing and doing. And uh, well, it, and it's, it's, it's a kind of passion that... Um, that that's in yourself. So that's a long answer for a short question. Thank you. So Raphael says, why why are some why are some automotive colors look more solid or opaque than others? I'm referring to the latest fashionable orange corals and similar. Uh, it comes down to the I believe the fickle nature of us as customers and kind of what 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 draws us um, in the end um, we're the customer that buys the cars and we really determine what colors you know what colors become popular and not popular here in the states 
there's a lot of transparent colors. There's still some absolutely gorgeous, um, some gorgeous oranges and some super, super deep reds. I mean, it's deeper than pyrroles and deeper than perylenes. They're just unbelievable colors. Um, so there's, as you say, there's just a lot of new colors coming out. But the end is always going to be uh, based upon what the industry believes the customer is going to want. We drive everything as customers. John, on that yes. subject, what credence do you put on, on things like Pantone? I'm sorry, one more time, please. Uh, what, what value do you put in uh, to um, colour sets like Pantone? So how we pick colour sets? Uh, there's a, an organisation that makes a, a set of colours, industry standard colours called Pantone. Yes, we use those when we were doing catalogues. We would use Pantone colours. Yeah. Um, so it depends on what industry there are. There's all different. There are, actually, those are registered colours. Um, yeah. So it depends on what you're doing. So they, they actually look at the trend throughout the world, don't they, of, of what colours are popular and what are going to be popular or what they want to push? Yeah, uh, every, I think every industry has that. I mean, there's, there's, it makes sense. You want to, you want to kind of keep, keep your finger on the pulse of your customer. I mean, if you want to exist, it's always, it always is about your customer. So yes, I was, that's, that's very accurate. I know that's going to do. Let me do one of the ones. So this one right here is going to be the deep gold. This is the quinacridone deep gold. This is the quinacridone sienna. It'll focus in a second. This one's going to be the yellow ochre. And May I reply to the Pantone question? Yeah. I heard a. I I like to read. I heard a response to that that as as artists, we need to also be careful to not only cater to the colors that are in vogue at the moment, because it also dates the work. If you only use colors that are popular in that season. Thanks. Oh, yeah, you're just following the trend to some extent, aren't you? And we want to be beyond the crest of that trend. Uh, making new discoveries, really, if we want to be on top of things. There have been a lot of things being said about the emotional uh, experience of color. Why are most of the genes blue? Because blue is, is a safe color. It gives a safe feeling. Why is uh, the KLM, our Royal Dutch Airlines, blue? It gives a safe feeling. So there's a lot to say about uh, emotional uh, response on colors. I would say there's there's mammoth studies being done about oh, yeah. that. There's studies on how it brings down the um, anxiety of children and of uh, adults because it can be very peaceful. When you go to big buildings, different floors have different colors. If you've ever gone to the hospital and, and parked underground, they're very, very muted, very soft colors because you're already in a heightened sense before you go in. So they, 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 you know, the colors can bring down everything it's, or bring up, you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it's, it's really beautiful. We react. I think that's the neat thing about um, this industry and also about the artists and, and art. It really it sets so much in our life when we see colors. You know, exactly. When, exactly. So oh, here we see. Go ahead. I didn't hear that. Um, we have um, a guest, Marinel. Just now, I think she wanted to share her works. Okay, sure. Okay, okay I'm going to add her spotlight. Yeah. Marinel, can you turn your? Um, can you here. unmute yourself? There we go. Now we can hear yeah. you. So <laughs> this is my small work, actually. I use transparent orange. And uh, new game board, oh, all cool. the things, yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is one more. Okay, 
and uh, i'll show you one one more and i'll show you color mix right. <laughs> these are for my tabletop paintings actually these are for myself <laughs> ah. i've been painting for others but the, then i thought okay i must paint something for myself <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is a little color study oh uh, okay here color study uh, which i did yeah, what are your and, colors uh, these are thalo blue thalo green and paint gray okay only three colors so <laughs> it was fun and uh, there's one more actually i just did it this one i just did it um this is cobalt teal Alizarin crimson and uh, quinacridone rose. Yeah. Oh, very nice. <laughs> very beautiful. Okay. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Okay, I'm... thank you so much. <laughs> Tom, was, we have uh... a, a question here. Yes. Yeah, sure. Uh, Queen deep gold has the same pigment as Queen gold. Does the difference lie in the concentration? No. So it comes back to. Uh, Many colors can share the can share the same designation. It doesn't mean it's the, it's the same pigment. For example, PV19 is Quinn Violet. PV19 is Quinn Red. PV19 is Quinn Rose. They look nothing like each other, but they have the same um, same color index. But they have different alpha and beta particles on the molecule. So how and where the um, colorist put it doesn't necessarily mean that's what it looks like. So for quinacridone gold, you can get for P048, for example, you can get a low, a medium, and a high, and they're all P048. And in particular, they can be gold. They all look different because they're different shades. Another way to look at that is we just looked at we just looked at gray titanium. This is PW6. I can put right next to this titanium white. It's also PW6. And titanium white does not look like gray titanium, right? And so buff titanium would be the same thing. Buff titanium is also PW6. So does it depend on the particles, the size of the particles? No, it depends on the chemistry and how the particular particle was made they're all made they're they're made per the standard of the industry and the client that wants them mm -hmm. does you. that work the opposite direction also where you have different pigments that all have the same pigment index number does it work the opposite direction where you can have one pigment i'm thinking pigment red 101 that would be also pigment brown seven or also yellow, like brown uh, uh, burnt umber burnt sienna or raw or within that range does it work that you can have one pigment that crosses different pigment index numbers but it's sourced from the same location so if something if something is a a natural then it then it can be sourced from location so you can have a natural mimic and also have a synthetic. Most of, so all the quinacridones, the perylenes, the pyrroles, those are all synthetic. Most things made from industry because they need to have kind of absolute perfection. It all has to be the same size, the same shape. Nobody wants a granulating car, for example. Um, no. They're made absolutely perfect. So those are created in the laboratory. But if we look at both, when, when, industry or whoever submits their color to be um, classified it's really the institute that decides where it goes so uh, if i send one in and they say it's uh, pigment red 101 um, they're not going to also give me um, pigment red 48 they're, they're going to give me for my particular pigment my particular shade they're going to say this is this is the family that it falls in so there's a whole regulating body for that. And it comes back into, you know, it comes back into uh, industry. There's the ISO standards. I mean, everything's built to a standard because um, 
to this industry. So you mean that the, the, the name is given afterwards and by, uh, by an organization? You can give the name, right? You, you, if you're the creator, you can give the name. Um, you can call it what you will. So most, most will actually name it after the, the chemistry house that created it. Um, so uh, Dow Chemical, for example, back in the day with the quinacridones, that's what they decided to call it because it was a five ring structure. They decided to call it quin. Quin means five. There's five rings that make up that molecule. Um, so they get to name it, but they don't get to say where it goes within the PY48, et cetera. That becomes the naming body. The naming body does that. They may be able to drive it through industry. I don't know quite how that works, but I know for certain it's gonna be the naming body that decides where it goes and within what family. Mm -hmm. so. That's great, thank you. Yeah, there's, whole, I... there's, a, there's a whole art to what they do and, and how they do it. Don, I have those two. Okay, go ahead, Gabriel. I have those two here, uh, the Quinn Gold and the Quinn Gold Deep. Oh, very cool. Can you spot that, spotlight that? Awesome. And can you point to which one so everybody will see? Can see so this is the which? Quinn uh, Deep Gold. Okay. And then this is the Quinn Gold. Okay. Thank you. Quinn so Deep Quinn nice Gold. I love the Quinn Deep Gold. I can get such a really nice glow when I can get like almost just water. You can get so much out of this color. Thank you very much, Gabriel. Welcome. And Okay, Anna, you had a question? I had a follow-up question. Okay. Is it possible to pull a pigment or an ochre, a naturally occurring substance, out of the ground, mining it, and from the same mine and hall and location, can we get a, an item that's labeled pigment index yellow, a pigment index red, a pigment index brown that crosses those? So, so the answer to that is... Um, Possibly yes, right? So if I take, if I take, especially from the ground, if I take a, let me put this back up again so I can see you or you can see me. So if I take a yellow ochre, I can burn that, right? And I can change it because I've changed the oxidation state and I can change a yellow to a red. Um, so that's a really good question. I can do the same thing with uh, uh, a hematite. Right, I can put it under a furnace and I can change the oxidation state. A good one, for example, would be the tiger's eye. The red tiger's eye doesn't exist. There's no such thing as red tiger's eye. It used to be sold back in the day because you can actually polish on this beautiful red, but it's just regular tiger's eye that goes under, you know, six or 700 degrees in a furnace. And you change the oxidation state from that beautiful yellow to a red. And then if you, if you process that pigment that's red, you have a red tiger's eye. That's how we get red tiger's eye. So your answer, the answer is yes, but it may not be that you're finding the, the red along with the yellow is that you're, you're changing the state of the yellow to a red or to, to a red or what have you by changing the oxidation state. So as an artist, does this mean that we should be looking not only at the name, the pigment index number, but also the chemical composition? You know, it, I know for some of you, you're, you're, um, you're all inquisitive. I think it's just like, for me anyway, there's times I really want to learn more. And so if you do, you can always look at that. So I think there's a subset that really want to know everything about a color and, and, you know, cool, that speaks to me. So you can look at that. I don't think that really determines kind of what you use. I think at the end as an artist, it's really, what do you want to create? because it's gonna be the color that speaks to you. But then if you wanna know all about the color, and I think that's so cool, yeah, you know, you can, you can from the information that's given from us, you can look that up and certainly learn more about how things are classified and, and if, you know, if that interests you. Um, it interests me, so that's kind of cool. John, I, think, I, 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 think, I think overall, what really pushes it is 
you know, at the end of the day, it's going to be kind of what you want to create, just like the painting behind you. You had a vision in your mind about what colors you wanted to use that were going to speak to you. And that, that's kind of what it's all about at the end of the day. John, yes. Yes. Uh, I, th I think um, you, you can pretty much say that most of us here watching this uh, what's classically called pigment nerds. I think you have, I think the thing that's important to me is to share with you as much as, as much and as many tools as possible. So you have all those tools in any way you want to use them in your toolbox. I think for many of you now, you can over a cup of coffee, just looking at a color chart. If somebody asked you about a color, you could actually tell them about it. You know, this is the pigment. This is what it means, how much it's going to granulate. This is kind of, you know, the transparency of it. You, you're going to be able to know all those things. I just get, it just gives more, it just gives more power, I think. And that's the power of, of knowing about the colors, et cetera, I believe should be in the hands of the artist. It just makes you have better choices about what you want to use and what you want to create. John, w yes. without giving any trade secrets out or anything like that, with regard to the stick, Yes. What, what basic colors do you think are you going to be adding to them in the not too distant future? Without saying any particular, you know, uh, specifics. Like, so, um, do you feel you need to put more reds in? Do you feel you need to put more blues in? Or what? What's your thoughts? So you'd ask you as a group, you'd ask for a neutral tint. It, it really comes down to me is what is going to help and be useful for you as artists. So I was listening to what it is you're saying. It's one of the beautiful things I like about doing this. Is I can actually, before the before COVID, and, and there's gonna be an after COVID, before COVID, I was able to meet with artists six months out of the year. I traveled the world six months out of the year. And the, the, the best part about that was interacting with artists. You know, asking them, you know, uh, what can I do? What, how are you using it? Is there something else? I really like asking those questions. It was the most, um, it was, you know, meeting Johnny and Fabriano, meeting uh, Giovanni and Fabriano, meeting George and Fabriano, Raphael and Fabriano. Most of the others from around the world were in Fabriano. It was great to interact with them and ask questions because um, that allows you to grow as a company. If you're not meeting the needs of your customer, you're in trouble. Um, so in creating the sticks and the colors, for me, it's important to listen to what my customers are asking for. And if it's reasonable to do, then, then that's kind of the path that I take. Did I lose sound? Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you, John. Thank you. All. And I had while you guys were talking, and we did already show. I I did the uh, burnt tiger's eye and the regular tiger's eye, which are two of my favorite. Uh, yeah. And I had to pick one for my dot card, and that was hard. Awesome! Awesome. Maybe I shall show more uh, tomorrow, but it is the result. It, it's it's only a sketch sketchbook of uh, Queen of Pedron and Deep Gold with uh, Alvaro Scalienta Gray. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, very, very beautiful. Only a sketchbook. Oh, yes. John, there is a question here. I don't know if it has been answered. Where okay. on the two paints show me whether the paint is transparent or opaque? So actually online, online, and then if you have a color chart, but the color chart is online. And so where you would look is right here at this symbol, right here at this symbol. And that symbol right there says this is semi-transparent. When it's open like this, it means it's transparent. And where it is completely dark, 
find one completely dark for you, blah, blah, blah. Here we go, English Red Earth. When it's completely dark like that, it means it's opaque. So we have transparent, fully open, half and half is semi-transparent and fully dark is opaque. But then not on the tube, right? I don't believe it's on the tube. There's only, so on the tube, the interesting thing about the tube is everything I have in the tube um, has to be translated into um, French as well. And there's only so much um, space, especially when I get to a five mil tube um, on it. So no, it's not on the, it's not on the tube. And but so you can find it in the um, uh, website, uh, yes, danielsmith.com actually has, has this as flippable on the website. Okay. So you can look at any color on the website as well. We're sharing the link once more in our Zoom Thank tab you. and in Facebook. So good question. Okay, so there's a question last week asked about reds, and I wanted to show you some of the reds, which kind of um, kind of touches uh, what some of you have been asking today. So this just shows, I showed this to a group last week, this just shows um, permanent lizard crimson. This is the half pen. This is from the tube, and this is from the stick. And the, the same binder, it's the same binder, it's the same pigment, it's just different water concentration. So the least amount of water is in the pan, followed then by the stick, and lastly, the tube. Okay. It's the only difference. Um, another question that was asked, and we've gone over this, so many of you have probably seen this. If you're interested in making your color look like a pastel, you can do that by just adding water. Um, this is adding uh, just different concentrations of water. And because what you're seeing is more white coming through, it's looked like more of a pastel look to it. So I thought we'd look at some of the reds. This is not all the reds, kind of Ian, this is a question that you had. Uh, here, for example, is anthraconoid red. So these are all colors with uh, pigment red, PR, okay? Here's burgundy red ochre, burnt sienna light, burnt yellow ochre, carmine, English red ochre, fired gold ochre, Mayan red, opera pink, that's because opera pink has a fluorescent, but it also has quinacridone magenta. Quinacridone magenta has a red pigment. So that's why opera pink is there. Organic vermilion. Paraline red. Potter's pink. Pyral scarlet. Quinacridone burnt scarlet. Quinacridone coral, quinacridone fuchsia, quinacridone lilac, quinacridone magenta, which is why opera pink's there because the underlying color under the fluorescent is quinacridone magenta. Rose matter permanent. Transparent red oxide. So those all have a pigment red. They, are, they either are a pigment red or they have a pigment red constituent. So just kind of showing that the pigment red, the, the red covers a lot of ground. And then you can choose, you know, for yourself, which red you're trying to use. Do you want a fire engine red, like a pyro red? Um, do you want just a little bit less than a fire engine red, a perylene red? Um, people say, well, you know, what about quinacridone red? Quinacridone red's not there. Well, quinacridone red, again, is a pigment violet. It's not a pigment red, right? It's, it's, it's not a pigment red. It's a pigment violet. So different what the pigment says versus what your eye as an artist says. 
I mean, you can see a lot, you can see some reds and they might be violets, for example. John, Anna, Anna Marie has a question. Go ahead, Anna. You also have several prematexts that fall under the hue of red. Yes, I did. I didn't. I didn't bring. You're absolutely correct. I didn't bring those out for this, but you're absolutely correct. Are you look? Are you have a sheet of all the reds as well? Oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah. You're absolutely correct. So I thought I'd show some of the reds. Are there? I don't have. I have a good portion of them. I figure we could look at some of them. Are there any ones that you want to see? Otherwise, I'll just I'll just pick some out randomly. We can look at them together. I would appreciate learning more about Potter's Pink. Okay, so let's look at Potter's Pink. Yeah, that was the color this week, right? What color yes. Wednesday was this color? And I loved this it. week. Last week. This week. This, oh, this week. Okay. Sandra, do you have a uh, deep scarlet there? I do have deep scarlet. I will show you deep scarlet. I'm looking for the potter's pink. I may not pick that one out. Um, Giovanni or Gabriel or Johnny, do you have potter's pink? I think Gio's getting his too. He's getting it? Yeah, and they're going to spotlight this. Red. So deep scarlet is red. Gio is showing the side by side for Potter's pink. Oh, see. Spotlight. Uh, mm, yes. Gorgeous. So deep scarlet. I mixed Peter Pearl Orange and Lunar Red Rock. It's two types of red. Hold, hold it, please, um, Angela. I'm gonna like that. One. Let me just put it on the spot. there. Uh, I think it's flip, please. One more. And one more, there. Like that? Yes. Or like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there. Close up. This is good. Wh which color is this? Um, Pearl red and uh, lunar red rock. John, you have- Lunar her? red rock. Lunar red rock and pyrrole red. I had more lunar red rock, but then the pyro red ate everything. Gorgeous. Thank you, Angela. Yes, thank you, Angela. Mark, did you ask about the deep scarlet? Yeah, deep scarlet, yeah. John, this is Potter Pink. Beautiful. Oh. Very granulating. Is that cold press paper? Yeah. Cold press. So that is the deep scarlet. That's deep. It's deep. <laughs> I love it. This is this is the red oh. rocket that Angela was using. So it's gonna have a lot of granulation in it. Uh, 
And Nicolas did a painting yesterday, mainly with this color. The English, English red earth. It's a pretty color too. Yeah, that Carmen's really, really intense. This is the rose matter permanent. The rose matter permanent. Uh, we used to have the rose matter, so. Rose matter is made from the rose matter plant. It's a laked pigment, which means it's a dye that's been uh, attached to a metal halide. But it was just hard because it's a natural product, it's a dye, it was hard to hit the color all the time. So that's rose matter permanent. Rafaele mentions that lunar red rock has a similar, though softer or less saturated shade as Indian red. Do you agree? Uh, no, Indi no, Ash, let me see if I have Indian. Um, that's just, that's a pretty intense color. Let me see if I have that. I tried to pick out most of the reds. This right here is the quinacridone lilac. So, um, Valerie, this is the deep scarlet. This is the lunar red rock. This is the English red earth. I think that's one you're asking about. This is the rose matter permanent. And this is the quinacridone lilac. What do you have there, Mark? Um, that's this what looks like brown is the lunar red rock. Awesome. This is on um, hot press paper. On hot press paper. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Why did you choose hot press versus the cold press? Because you're gonna have less of the. Well, why why did you pick the the hot press? Uh, because I wanted to do something abstract. I wanted the water, the paint to flow. Very so. Cool. Um, this is, yeah, this is very warped because uh, I used a, a lot of water and there. then uh, let the, I just let the pigments flow and you put it sideways and, and, uh, and everything. Yeah. Very beautiful. May Thank we you. see the granulation of the lunar red rock on the hot press paper? Can I have a, like, a big close up? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it hardly granulates, but um, it's, it's, it's just that color's great. And then I put the, um, the yellow, yellow green shade against it and uh, comes out quite nicely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Gabriel, Giovanni, Johnny, do you have um, Indian red on your palette right now? I think so, yeah. I also have this uh, little sketch uh, on hot pressed paper. I'm sorry for the camera. No, not at all. All right. So, John in Garrett? I don't. Um, can you mention the color again, please, Geo? India red. Okay, thank you. Oh, there we go. So the India red is is right there. It's it's a much it's a it's a much darker color. It's a very pretty color. Okay, let me show one other one. This is one Raffaele was just talking about, which is. This is the red jasper. And so yeah, John, 
I switched out Indian red for a uh, hematite burnt scarlet. Did you? Mm hmm. So this is the um, red jasper genuine, which is a primitive. You can see that, you can see the granulation in that particular color. Okay, so with that, thank you, everybody. Thank you for sharing, for those of you sharing your art, thank you for sharing your art. Thank you for um, taking part. Um, Jan Min, who's been on with us today, will be uh, the artist tomorrow. It'll be interesting to see how he uses all these colors. Anna, thank you for um, your input as well. Thank you. Uh, Mark, thank you. Ian, thank you. Thank you all for joining. I hope you can all join tomorrow and get to ask John Min questions. It'll be open dialogue on the, um, the Zoom side. So if you want to ask interactive, go ahead and, and do Zoom. Zoom, while it does have a video, you can turn the video off and just put a picture of yourself or a picture of your artwork. And if neither one, it'll just have your name. So it's a, uh, you can, you don't have to worry about the, the video portion of it. So with that, thank you all very much. I appreciate you joining and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you, John. Thanks, everyone. Beautiful session.